Okay, so um, so there's two primary. These aren't the only problems, but these are the two problems that uh, that I'm going to be covering in this talk today. The first uh, issue associated with this uh, is or getting GCC to run on M1 is to teach GCC about the AI64 ABI differences. So uh, Apple, uh, obviously, AI64 ABI is well understood. It's what Linux runs on, but Apple has have a few modifications, uh, primarily to do with how it aligns parameters on the stack. Uh, uh, compared to variadic ones, and I'll, I'll take a look at that next. And the second issue, which was primarily led by Andrew, uh, tackled by Andrew, which was to how to get GCC nested functions to work uh, without an executable stack. Now, Apple actually globally disables the execute bit for the stack. Uh, and this isn't like a code signing issue. This is just ev everywhere. You can't do it. And Clang doesn't support this. Ask him, well, Clang doesn't support this, so there's no reference implementation to uh, be able to compare to or run test against. So. Uh, this is actually quite a, a novel work in that way, uh, whereas the ABI issue we can do tests against. Okay, so I'll, I'll start talking about the ABI differences with the variadic arguments. Now, on Linux, think the world is very simple. Named and variadic are always word aligned on eight bytes, and the world's very flat in that sense. And GCC doesn't have to worry about these kind of things. Uh, but on a Darwin, it gets trickier. Now you've got a differentiation between variadic and named parameters, where the named is on eight bytes, but uh, on variadic, or rather, eight will be, the names will be uh, naturally aligned. So potentially, you'll have you know if you pass a unsigned short char char, that'll be all in thirty two bits. But the variadic will always have its full eight bytes. So now they're laid out differently, and GCC doesn't actually have a uh, well, it doesn't have necessary. Um, there's no information available to the back end to be able to differentiate between these two. So to get a bit more detail, there's, this primarily happens in the expand pass where we lower calls into actual uh, RTL. And uh, the function, in, well, I won't go into the details, but specifically locate and pad palm function in initialized argument information, which is what pass expand, expand calls. Uh, it goes through and loops through each argument. And in the beginning, the first six will be just register arguments. So locate and pad palm won't even get called. Or rather, it will get called, but it'll it'll say, hey, put this on a register. Uh, but if you're not on a register and you're on the stack, uh, it will call the two target uh, backend functions, uh, target function arg boundary and arg ground boundary. There's two more, actually, but they're not important for Apple, so I omitted them. And they only care about mode and type. So there's no scope there for looking in and saying, oh, you know, is this a named argument or, or anything else indeed? So um, yeah, this is, a, and the, the information is actually there. So on the next slide, I'll, uh, we already have a structure in GCC cumulative arcs. This is just a backend defined thing uh, where you can put anything in there pretty much. And GCC will shuttle the structure around uh, whenever there's a decision making process that it can't make an assumption about. And the infrastructure is already all there. I mean, cumulative arcs is threaded through most of the middle end, but except for the two places where we really need it for Apple, which is the round, target function arc boundary and round boundary functions. Uh, which are obviously very core target backend hooks. Uh, and uh, so natural inclination, uh, uh, impulse is to just shove it into a third parameter. But well, th you know, these functions are used by every backend. So you're going to be, well, I guess that's a you know, bit of work with grep, I suppose, but uh, it's a bit invasive. Uh, what's our current idea that we're pursuing is to just have to find two new function arc boundary macros with the cumulative args parameter. So these you know, just just a third parameter, but we give it a new name. And the default implementation will just call the non-cumulative args variant. So that way you don't have to touch any of the other backends. They just continue living as they are. And they, they don't care about whether it's named or not. Uh, but for our, in RGC4 Darwin, we can override that and say, OK, if, if this is a named or not named, we give it where we turn different kind of rounding modes. And that way we can uh, support this world and that world. Because Apple is quite unique in this regard. And, uh, it seems uh, it would be strange to have to really dig up GCC just for one backend. And this seemed like a good balance between an invasive and non-invasive change. I'm just going to take, check, check the uh, time. Oh. Uh, 16.09. Okay, good. Um, right, yeah. Yes, right, okay. And... Uh, and I've been on that slide. And this is just a small example I cooked up to demonstrate the issue a bit more. Uh, this graph on the, on the right is a bit confusing. Uh, S0, where you see S0, 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 S0 repeated, that's what the compiler has allocated for that parameter. That, that From the compiler's point of view, that's how much bytes that parameter takes up. And uh, 
the gray and the white difference that shows how much that ac parameter actually takes up. So on AH64, everything is, as I said, is eight bytes aligned, nat naturally aligned, word aligned. So it doesn't matter if you've got uh, a 64, 32-bit, the compiler will just give you eight bytes on the stack and uh, and everything works and it's you know, easy. Now, initially, if you just then take the Darwin port and just try and, uh, without any of the hacks that we've done and just tell the, if you just flat align it, naturally align everything, you'll get the wrong answer because uh, GCC will then start putting things into 32 bits where var variadic should be 64 bits. So it, it naturally aligns the uh, name stuff, which is fine, but the variadic stuff shouldn't be aligned. It should have its own eight byte slot each time. So this is sort of the naive approach, which uh, will result in binary incompatibility. And what we really want at the, uh, there's a third example, is to have everything that's named and naturally aligned and everything else be, I think I'm messing up my word aligned and naturally aligned, or oh, anyway, and everything else be word aligned. So this is the kind of stack layout that we're looking for. So uh, if it's named, you can put stuff a bit closer together, but if it's periodic, we just give it flat eight bytes each time. Okay, and this is just some of the tests we've done. So this is bootstrapping now on M1, and uh, specifically some of the useful tests have been compact and struct layout, which are basically uh, fuzzes, or sort of, that uh, it, we, we could uh, compare against. So this, it, it does A, B tests. So it takes an object file, compiles it with compiler A, and then the second object file compiles with compiler A, links it and runs it, then AB links and runs, BA links, runs, BB links, runs. Uh, and obviously A is like Clang and B is G our GCC port. And uh, we're using that to sort of base uh, how healthy the compiler is looking. And it's it's looking to be a relatively non-invasive change at the moment. Okay, and the second uh, uh, feature I'm going through is the nested function support. Um, just check my time again. Ah, oh, okay, I'll assume I've got a few minutes left. Uh, so, uh, G uh, the Cl uh, Clang has the, uh, Apple has the problem that they've marked this, well, not a problem, but they've marked the stack as non-execute, which is a problem for nested functions. Uh, you need to put the trampoline on the stack, and you need to, you need to run it, you need to mark it as execute, and Apple doesn't let that. So, uh, this is work primarily led by Andrew. Well, our idea is to actually MMAP pages in at runtime to hold trampolines. And uh, this is still a prototype idea. We still there's some cute questions left, but there is a, a prototype, working prototype that we have, and I'm just going to go into a few details about uh, how, as I understand it, it works. So there's two sides of the notifications that uh, we've done, which is uh, for libgcc, there's two new functions, which is we a uh, function to create the nested function and to delete it. Uh, in libgcc, we've added a new uh, thread local sort of root page, which is always present, and it will contain uh, basically the is location where we can chain on trampolines at runtime or play locations in memory for trampolines at runtime. Uh, and we can mark that as execute because MMAP ex marked as executable is allowed. And uh, for the GCC side, on the front end, in the place where we lower the nested functions, we've added those built in calls to those built in. So every time we enter a function that contains a nested, that contains a code which has a nested function and we take the address of it. So that is to say, we have a nested function that we're using, and it escapes our scope. I think that's as I understand, as I understand it. Uh, we emit calls to uh, create, uh, allocate a pointer to this nested function when we enter it uh, for the trampoline, and then uh, call it again to clean it up after ourselves. And this then goes into the libgcc code, and libgcc will uh, either reuse the root page because trampolines aren't that big. Or if we're out of memory, it'll uh, chain on a new, it'll allocate a new page, mark it as execute, and ha chain it onto the root page. And this bypasses the need for an executable stack. So it's uh, quite a neat solution. So in summary, uh, these aren't the only issues. These are just, the, as I say, the two features that I've been talking about in stock. There's a few others that I haven't gone over. Uh, in conclusion, though, for the variadic argument, it's pretty much functional. There's some regression tests that need to be squashed, but uh, it, it's not, as I say, not, not a very invasive change in the end. The MMAP trampoline implementation is still a prototype, and there are a few questions regarding, as I understand, uh, how it behaves when you've got a long jump set up or when you're exception handling or unwinding. I think I'm not sure what the conclusion was on that, but the idea is that there may have to be uh, restricted support. So we may have to be able have to say that on Darwin, if you're using trampolines, you know, 
some things might not work as you would expect on x86, for example. Uh, but that's the state of the, uh, that's what I wanted to say. And that's the state of our work at the moment. Uh, thank you all for listening. And I will try to answer some questions if there's time. Yeah, I think there's a question from Jakob about leaking trampolines on long jump out of a function. But the, that was in the slide. Okay. Yeah. I do recommend to uh, Ian and Andrew, are, I'm uh, experts at this this particular code aspect. Yeah, um, unfortunately, that we we didn't yet find a solution to the long jump in a general case. There may be cases in which you can successfully clean up, but um, not all. Okay, well, if there are any other questions, people go to uh, uh, any contact Maxime or, or Ian directly. And uh, thanks, Maxime and, and Ian and everybody for the, the great work on this uh, to enable AR64 Darwin in GCC is a lot of uh, a great plan, great progress. Uh, so thanks very much for this great work and contributing to GCC. Can I and, uh, uh, can I just say the QDOS actually partly goes to the Fortran team. The, the huge driver for this is coming from the Fortran side. In fact. Excellent. Very glad. You know, glad that there is a, a lot of. Uh, Pull and requirement for this, and that uh, we're continuing the progress. So, so thanks to the Fortran team as well, as Dean said. So thanks, Maxim, very much for this presentation, this update. Thank you, David. Uh,